The success of the Doiton Development Project has become a model for a sustainable alternative livelihood initiative that is now widely recognized internationally. The Mai Fa Luang Foundation to date has also implemented similar projects in Afghanistan as well as in Aceh in Indonesia and is now focusing on Myanmar. By providing alternative livelihood through agriculture, handicrafts, tourism and food, the project tackles poverty and ensures sustainability by reinvesting profits made in the project into the community's social development. I asked Kun Chai about how the foundation works and collaborations with other countries, including Indonesia. Now, the foundation itself, uh, I know that has done a lot of work internationally as well. Okay, there's a... A Af little. <laughs> a little. But a little bit significant, for example, in Afghanistan. Yes. And also in Aceh. Yes. And now working together with you know, the Myanmar. Yes. Tell me about those projects, particularly the ones in, in Aceh. And how do you work together with uh, different countries? And how do you actually you know, get them to collaborate and to actually check their needs and wants and get your involvement in those projects, particularly in Afghanistan, which is a conflict area. Uh -huh. Wow. In Myanmar, which, as we see, still does the slash and burn and the opium trade, yeah. and the, there's still warlords there. How do you get accepted? Aren't they human beings? All of us? Absolutely. Who wants to be a bad guy? No one is will want to be a bad guy. But they didn't have the opportunity to be a good guy. This is what we believe. That's why, you know, I mean, Muslim countries that we're working in, we're not Muslim, we're Buddhist, but we don't mind working, you know, religion, every religion is good. Even the forefather, which we call here, is a witch doctor, witchcraft and so on. I work with them very closely and I understand them and I believe in them and I do respect them. So this is the first issue. Now, you know, the first question that you ask about the Ajay, we didn't seek to go there, but it so happened that the UN ODC United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime came and asked us to go to RJ and see the project there, what can be done. They would like our expertise, you see. So I said, why don't you bring the Arjanese to come to our pro project first? Mm -hmm. you know, whether they can see that this can be applicable in their uh, society. So the uh, UNODC invited the Arjanese, led by the governor and his staffs, mm -hmm. as well as NGO came over, and we he took around, look around, for three days and two nights, and he said, "This is it. We can adapt." The governor was, he's smart. This guy is smart, and then he asked me to go. So I went with UNODC and UNODC, and then I saw that the. Uh, mm -hmm. marijuana was grown and so on, yeah. you know, I saw the plants itself and so on. I know they don't want to do it, but they had to do it. So I thought that uh, we can do it together. Mm -hmm. But a lot of uh, Jakarta people told me that uh, the most difficult people to work with is the Ajanese. Even I've been warned, I don't mind it, you know, but it took us quite some time because even though two or three groups, we brought them here to see. Yeah. But when they went home, they don't have to do anything. You know, you put anything in the ground, it grows. You can pick to eat, you got the water, plenty of water, the soil is so mm -hmm. good. You don't have to do anything. You know, that's what I thought. But if you can talk to the people who are really in debts and they want to get out of it, they're not poor in the sense of like in Afghanistan, they don't, or here. They don't even know what, where they're going to get the next meal. These people, they can pick coconut, the rice is there, everything is around in the fields and also in the woods. They can pick it to eat. So it's just like 7-Eleven or the mm -hmm. department store 
in the forest for them, you see. But um, some of them, they want to do more. So we, we thought about the goat bank, you see. So we start the goat bank, we do the weirs. The first thing is weirs. Mm -hmm. because some For the, the water. Yes, mm -hmm. the water. Because some of the land don't get the water. Those are the people that are hard up. Those are the people that we should help. But those that are nice paddy field and plenty of rice and so on, plenty of water, you don't need to help them. They know how to do it, you know, to survive and to become uh, sufficient and so on. So that's how we start. But the thing is, the most important thing that I think is, uh, I didn't know, I didn't realize, was I put in the middle between the local government and the central government, which they don't talk to each other. Yeah. They distrust each other. Mm -hmm. But I'm so proud that I was able to bridge that gap. Talk to Jakarta, Jakarta come to Aceh. And Ajanese went to Jakarta and we talked together. And even the army working together at the beginning, very rough with us. But at the end, they worked together with us. And even the army come with us and work with the Ajanese. And I think that's what's good. Mm -hmm. So at least the least bit we can do is that bridge that gap so that they can trust each other by using us in the middle, that we don't side with anybody. We're going for human beings. Mm -hmm. I don't care who they are. You see, that's in, in Aceh. Mm -hmm. I think it went pretty well, but uh, we worked there for six years. And they're nice people, the Ajanese. Very, very nice indeed. Now, concerning uh, Afghanistan, it started because the British government invited me to speak uh, in Kabul mm -hmm. in the year 2002 and then the I invited the them to come and see us and a lot of American British came over and then we I was consultant to some of them you know that work with the USID and and, and DFIT as well mm -hmm. so I've been to Kandahar, Helmand, Sabu, Ghazni all those area that's a conflict area conflict yeah. area mm -hmm. I mean I'm working really with the Taliban. You don't know who the, uh, the Taliban, nearly all of them are, you know, the family, because they got to, they have to survive, you know. But I don't care about these things. But if you can go and help them, so that's why we brought them over here for 45 days. 35 Afghans stay here for a month and a half. And I had the Netta film, the Jewish mm. company, drip irrigation. They're meant to be the best drip irrigation. Jewish taught the Muslim, all right, here in the Buddhist Buddhist country. And before they left, they cuddle each other, they cry, 